very happy to have Chef Alan Susser back with us, uh, returning as a guest presenter tonight uh, on a three-part se series. Uh, Chef Alan is a longtime resident of uh, Hollywood. In fact, he's my backdoor neighbor. And uh, he has been touted by the New York Times as the Ponce de Leon of South Florida, of New Florida cooking. He is a James Beard Award winner with a passionate commitment to local fresh ingredients. Uh, Food and Wine Magazine named Chef Allen as one of the best 10 chefs in America. We are so proud to have him and so glad that he is a fan of our library and has offered to present this series for our, for our friends. Uh, tonight, He's going to be talking about toasting the holidays, featuring holiday toast and fare. So uh, with that introduction uh, and letting you know that we are recording this session, if everyone would please put their put their video on uh, their, their sound on mute right now, it would be appreciated. And I am turning this over to Chef Alan Susser. Welcome, Chef. Well, thank you. Thank you. A pleasure to be with you. and. Uh... With all of my neighbors, I'm sure that uh, there are so many people in our area that uh, are tuning in. So it's a pleasure to meet you via Zoom because that's kind of the way we, we meet today. But I'll tell you what, it's great to be in touch with you. It's great to share some of what I do. And it's the holidays and kind of what you want to do is kind of have fun, see family and friends at a distance, safe distance, and then we get that. Uh, so stay zooming. So this is kind of a warm up for the, the holiday zoom parties. Okay, I, I just had a zoom party with my family yesterday and it worked out great. So I encourage you to do that. Say hello to your friends and family through whatever social media apparatus you have, but toast to the holidays, have a good warm connection. Okay, it doesn't mean you have to go and be in their house. Uh, but stay safe. Uh, and so that kind of what I want to do is share a couple of ideas of how to have fun with it. Uh, and toasting, toasting is kind of, uh, uh, kind of what we like to do. You know, does it mean drinking? Does it mean eating? Does it mean having a good time? Absolutely. I think that's kind of what we want to do is have a good time with it. Enjoy, enjoy family. So I'm going to get started here, um, uh, with a, a toast and, now we're going to make up a, a nice little cocktail to begin with so we can toast because as I'm cooking today and maybe you're at home uh, tonight uh, so maybe you want to make a, a toast uh, with that. So I'm going to do one of my favorite cocktails which is a Negroni. Okay I'm not sure if you've heard of Negroni before but uh, Negroni is uh, gin and Campari and also vermouth. Okay so these three come together uh, kind of a, it's an Italian aperitif, which is a good way to get started. So I'm gonna make up this cocktail very simply. I like to use measures when I'm making up a, a cocktail. So this is gonna be a, a strong brew, okay? So it's, these are equal parts. This is Campari, which is a sweet, bitter sort of flavor to it. Along with that, I've got a little vermouth. Okay, so the vermouth has some nice depth of aromatics. And guess what? Gin. I love gin. It's got so many different botanicals, which means flavors. It means like the herbs and the spices that I cook with. So this is like cooking with spices and herbs. So this is a boutique uh, gin maker. And I'll put that in. Okay, so I put it in which means I, I've mixed it into a, a little uh, pitcher, so I have enough for the night. I actually got two glasses here, as you can see with large ice cubes, okay? These are oversized ice cubes, but that's kind of what you need, okay? And what we're going to do is pour right over the ice cube, the cocktail, okay? And I've got a second one here, which I'm going to share with you. Okay, so we can get started here. And then before to finish, wonderful flavors, big aromatics. We take a nice cut of orange zest, okay? The orange peel. Take that, 
and give it a zest. Give it a zest. That means turning it, getting all those essential oils out of it. Put it in there. Okay. That's a Negroni. This is an awesome cocktail. Toast to your health. Toast to a good new year, success, health, and prosperity. Okay. Enjoy. Mm. I think we'll all drink to that. <laughs> <laughs> so this has a little bit of bitterness, bittersweet 2020, a little bit of joy and hope for the future, the aromatics, lots of flavor. And this is something you want to sip while you're enjoying it. I'm not, not going to gulp this down, but we're going to sip this through our event tonight. Okay. So this is our first toast that we have to you, to all our friends in Hollywood, to the folks at the library for all of your support for our local branch here on Sterling. It's absolutely wonderful. Really appreciate having a local library with so many wonderful friends there. So gonna get started. Gonna put the cocktail making aside because we wanna get some serious eating going on. Okay, so I'm just putting that to the side here. And I'm not moving that too far. We're gonna to make toasts, okay? So I've got two kinds of breads here for making toast. One, which is the challah, okay, kind of nice. It's gonna, it toasts up really nice. It's a sweet egg bread, really beautiful. And then the other is a whole, whole wheat, whole grain, which I, I, I love the texture and flavor. So that's kind of what we wanna do here is utilize these two breads for our choice of different toasts that we're going to make. Now, toast can be a casual thing. We can use a big bread like this, or what we can do is kind of utilize something that's uh, you know a, a small baguette, a skinny, tall, long baguette, and slice them, the same types of toppings to go on that. And quite honestly, you couldn't use anything for toppings. You know, if you want to do peanut butter and jelly toast, be my guess. If you want to do something else uh, in that sort of fashion, melted cheese is also good. Today what we're going to do though is a couple, two different versions of toast. Two of them I'm going to use avocado and we'll talk about the avocado. And then two I'm going to use some hummus, which I love hummus, kind of a Mediterranean feel to it. And then also I'm going to do a classic smoked salmon at the end of it. So if you'll follow along, I'm not sure if anyone's cooking with me, but if not, uh, you'll see it as we go. So to begin with, I'm gonna take our bread and cut nice thick cuts on this for our toast. So I'm going to, I, I like whole breads for doing toast because that way you can cut nice thick or thin slices. So that's kind of what I'm going to do here. So I'm cutting up several slices of this whole, whole wheat, whole grain. Okay, and we've got that going on. I'm gonna put this here. Actually, what I'm gonna do is take two of them and turn around back here and put them in the toaster. And get those going. And then I've got my challah, okay? And the challah also going to take and Give that a nice cut. And again, some nice thick pieces of the challah. It cooks up, it toasts up really rich, which is really nice. So we got that going on. We've got the challah going on there and some challah. And I've actually got a double toaster so I can get started here really nicely. Two more slices in, get that going. Line them up. Okay, and kind of the secret to cooking, what we call mise en place. Okay, mise en place is this big French word, exactly three words, mise en place, put in place. And that put in place means this in front of you. Okay, just getting organized. Instead of running around the kitchen, it's not what you want to do. If you're organized, have your ingredients ready get ready, set, go, and then you, you have it. All the TV shows, you're running around and doing everything and kind of like 
yeah, that's, that's one way to cook, but it's not my way to cook. Uh, so getting all your ingredients that you intend to use, some big flavors. And I always love to have fresh herbs available for when I cook with. Here I've got some fresh dill. Okay, the dill has some really nice aromatics, kind of foresty, fresh, airy sort of flavors. That's the dill. We'll see where we utilize that. I've got some mint, also some mint, just really wonderful flavors with, uh, with mint. It's very aromatic. It goes with almost anything sweet or savory. Uh, you'd be surprised how adding mint to almost any recipe is gonna make a big difference for you. And then I also have some thyme. Thyme is one of those little mystery flavors that when you're roasting, when you're cooking, when you're cooking, uh, whether it's chicken or beef or wild mushrooms, like we're gonna cook wild mushrooms with this, that's kind of where I use my, my thyme. Okay, so that's, uh, that's kind of where, where we get started. Okay, so to begin with, I've got an avocado. And to look at the avocado, how do you tell when it's ripe? That's usually the, the question of the day. You give it a squeeze. So give it a squeeze, see where it's at, and it should be a little bit soft. So smell my toast happening here. Looking good. So going back to squeezing avocados, it's kind of like squeezing mangoes. I know it might be backwards, but you know I'm a mango crazy guy. And so squeezing a mango, squeezing a tomato, squeezing avocado, okay? It's really what you do in the supermarket or the farmer's market, squeeze it. If it has a little bit of give, it's probably gonna be ripe. If it needs to ripen a few days, sometimes you wanna buy, buy it and let it ripen on the countertop, that's perfectly fine. So with this, what I'm going to do is take it and cut it across, cut it all the way around, and then give it a half turn and open it up. Okay, yeah, can you guys see that? I'm not sure what you're trying to see. My cameraman is uh, working here and she's doing a great job. To remove the seed, I take the, the knife and kind of just flick that out and we've got that seed removed. Okay, so I'm gonna just put this aside and gonna start off with our toast. So I've got a couple pieces here ready to go. As you can see, so I'm gonna put two aside for a little bit after. And so I've got the fala and also I've got the whole grain. With the avocado, kind of what you want to do is we're going to peel the avocado. So I start at the top end and I peel this back and cut all the way through just a little line on it. And then kind of peel the side back and side back. So if you're lucky, you get a nice slice of avocado in that sort of fashion. Okay, so within that, so what we're going to do is slice the avocado. Okay, so I slice it thin, kind of a little bit of on a, on a bias, just slice it through. Okay, and with that, I then take it, give it a little bit of a shove with my hand. And you can see, I'll bring it up to you so you can kind of see what's going on there. And I'm gonna place that on our toast, okay? And that's kind of our first avocado toast. Everyone's familiar with avocado toast. So kind of just to, to finish that avocado toast off, what I'm going to do is utilize a little bit of pickled red onions, okay? You gotta have some variants, you gotta have a little bit of tartness. The avocado is beautiful, sweet, rich, and buttery. So a little bit of tartness. What I did is took some red onions with rice wine vinegar and did a little pickling, just a few minutes on it, just like that. Okay, so that's the pickled red onions on top of the toast. In addition to that, I've got a little bit of crushed red pepper because I like a little seasoning on that. Also going to get a little bit of lime juice. 
this avocado, even though we've got the, the vinegar. So I got a little squeeze of lime juice on this. Okay, and with that, I'm gonna to touch a salt, kosher salt, to top that with, and then a couple of sesame seeds just for color and texture. Okay, so we've got this all going on. Beautiful. So here I'm gonna do is take it and then I'm going to slice it in half. And I've got a platter over here, which I'm going to put on and we're gonna build a little bit of a toast thing going on here. But just so you can see our first, first one, it's really good. Lots of texture, color. These are all important things. Talk about color and texture. Hey, let's add a little bit of herb to it. So I've got a little bit of mint and I'm just gonna tear the mint, one leaf, just tearing it, taking a second leaf. Wow, it just, just the flavors of the smells, the aromatics of the mint really comes through. So that's kind of our, our first toast that we're gonna make. And I just set that aside and we'll come back to it. Okay, so here, cheers, we're getting there. I've got my cocktail, so cheers and a toast to you guys. Hmm. It's gonna get better and better as the cocktail goes on, so. Okay, so I've got the next toast here going on for avocado, and it's gonna be another take on avocado. But this time, what I'm gonna do is heat up a pan, and I'm gonna to top it with a fried egg. Okay, so again, just a little bit. I, I saved the toast, uh, the collard toast, since it's an egg bread. I, I'm using that with an egg as well. So that here I'm just warming up my pan to, to get cooking for a fried egg. A little bit of olive oil in the pan. Okay, one of the things that you need to do when you're cooking is heating up preheat the pan, preheat the oil, it's part of getting organized, it's part of being ready to be prepared to cook. So the oil, it heats up. I've got an egg over here, okay? And just going to take it and crack the egg. Put it in the pan and let it cook, okay? Um, yeah, you can see it there. Okay, try to center it uh, so that the, the center, just so you know, the, the freshness of the egg shows when you have a very fresh egg, the egg sits up on top of the white and the, the looser white, as you get a larger white that spreads out, that becomes a little bit of an older egg. Uh, not that they're bad, eggs last quite a while and they're good. So I've got that egg going on, it's gonna cook and I'm gonna make that sunny side up. But here, what I'm going to do, as I did with the, the first toast, I'm going to take my avocado and cut through the back piece. Again, take the, this and slice through and slice through. Okay, so I've got the skin off. With this again, I'm going to take it and slice it through. Just real. Nice. Okay, give it a spin, fan it out a little bit. Okay, and we've got the fanned out. My egg is very happy over there. So with this also, I'm gonna just take this and turn this down a little bit. So she cooks up nice. So with this, I'm going to season with a little bit of crushed red pepper and some salt, sea salt, kosher sea salt. And then since I'm gonna put an egg on top, I'm just gonna crush this down a little bit so it doesn't wobble and run around. So with the back of a fork, just a little bit of crushing of the, the fresh avocado. Okay, and the egg is looking good. So our egg, you kind of want to drain it if there's anything loose left over. So just take a moment. I'm actually going to take the egg and look at it. It's going to overflow a little bit. So I'm going to just come over here and 
trim down some of my extra egg that's here. Okay, so I just take off a little bit of extra egg. And put our egg on our avocado toast. Now I know you think this is simplistic, but I'll tell you what, simple is good. Simple is wonderful. It really is nice. I'll take a little fresh dill from here. And just a, again, just a couple of dill sprigs brings up the flavor, brings up the color, the texture, kind of really, really fun. Okay, so here I'm gonna come back to our plate. And so we've got our first two toasts, both on avocado, one with the pickled red onion and the other with a, a, our a soft, uh, soft sunny side up. Over easy, some people like it over easy, where you can take it, turn it and flip it over. And that's fine too, that's over easy. I like the, the sunny side up egg in that sort of fashion. So we've got the, those two going on. So I hope you guys are, are doing well. Uh, I'm not sure if you've got any questions as we're going along. Um, uh, you know, this is casual, it's fun, it's easy. If you have any questions, someone wants to read them to me or share, I can uh, answer questions and make it a little bit more interactive, or I can go on and I will continue to go on either which way. As, as we're going. If anybody okay. has questions, please enter them in the chat room and we'll be ha happy to ask the, the chef to answer them. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, so our next toast that we're going to do, we've got our, our next toast here and that's going to be a nice simple hummus. Hummus is chickpea and tahini. A little bit of olive oil, a touch of garlic, a touch of water, sesame seed is, uh, is in there. So that's a tahini. Okay, and so I made some uh, fresh this afternoon. And so with that tahini, I'm going to spread that out. Give it a nice lush version of the tahini. Okay, in addition to that, what I like to kind of blend with this is a little Lebanon. Lebanon is kind of like a Greek yogurt. You can actually replace it with a Greek yogurt if you like. But uh, Lebanon and tahini, really nice combination. So I'm just going to give that a little soft spread. It adds a little bit of tartness to the tahini. Lebanon on top of that. Now, guess what I need for, for the topping on that? Zatar, okay? Zatar is awesome. Zatar is this combination of sumac, um, as well as sesame seeds, a touch of several different types of herbs, a little dried mint, dried parsley, several people do different versions of this. And as well, I've got a touch of extra virgin olive oil to just drizzle on there, okay? so. Kind of really easy and simple. If you like some fresh red pepper like I do in almost everything, why not? Okay, uh, some really good flavors uh, going on. And again, a nice toast and toast point. So with this, I'm going to take it and cut it into thirds so that we can also have a, a nice sampling of this. So make them bite size. And with that, I'm going to also top this with a little fresh herb, okay? For, for me on this one, again, is gonna be some of the fresh mint, okay? Kind of real airy. Just hitting it with a touch of mint. Just touch of mint on, on each of these. And then also I'm going to give just a touch of acidity with that touch of lime. So just a spritz 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 of lime not too much more than that okay and that's kind of your, your next toast so you can see this how simple this it becomes we're on the, the right track we've got three different textures three different uh things going on so that uh we're going to go into the next one okay so so far so good and 
Our next that we're going to do is again going to be a toast on the challah. So coming up with the challah, I'm going to use some wild mushrooms. And I don't know, but it's one of my favorite kind of umami flavors is that mushroom. Mushroom adds so much flavor. Uh, it's the aromas, it's the flavors. It's just really delicious and adds to anything that, that you're, you're cooking. So with that, I've got uh, actually a couple different types of mushrooms. I've got some cremini mushrooms or what they call uh, small portobellos and also some shiitake mushrooms. Okay, so again, we're gonna go to the pan and turn the stove on, get some heat going on in there, put a little bit of olive oil to warm up for our mushrooms. And for slicing the mushroom, just kind of slicing down nice and thin. We've got some nice mushrooms like that. Along with, I've got some shiitake, so I've got some kamini and shiitake mushrooms. With mushrooms, love garlic, okay? So I've got a little bit of garlic here. For the garlic, I got a whole clove, as you can see. And you can take it and chop and chop and chop and chop. You can do that. Or at the side of a nice knife, take the knife, hit it, and bang it, okay? Then if you want, you can chop it. Okay, wow. The room just exploded with garlic. Okay, now I'm gonna add that in to the oil. So we've got the oil and the garlic cooking together. Along with that, I'm going to also take a couple of pieces of thyme and also into our oil. So now I'm seasoning the oil. This way it gets all through everything that, that we're doing. Okay, and so I'm gonna use half of the shiitakes and half of the creminis in there. Beautiful. And put that back down in there. Okay. I wish you were here. This is smelling awesome. Just the wonderful smells that you have going on here. Uh, delicious, the, the mushrooms, the garlic, the thyme, all coming out. Okay, give it a nice little soft toss. Mushrooms, you kind of want to cook uh, hot and on a hot temperature so that if you don't, they'll start to come, all the water will start to come out of it. If you cook them hot, they'll stay moist and juicy without losing all of that, that water content in them. So we're going to keep that going on there. Now it, it usually needs something additional. We can put some cognac in there. You can put some uh, white wine with mushrooms. I'm actually gonna do it with a little bit of lemon zest, lemon. Okay, so I'm gonna just take a little corner of the lemon and as it's cooking, add that little bit of acidity to it. Okay, gonna give it a little bit of seasoning, salt and pepper. And that's kind of it. Okay, so I've got my toast that I'm going to go, go with you. I'm gonna use the collar toast. And I toast to you with my Negroni. We're doing good. I've got my other in reserve just in case. I think well, this is gonna be a one Negroni night. Maybe we'll finish off with a second. But, so here we go. Here we go, we're doing good. Chef, we got a question as to where you buy your herbs. Um, well, that's a good question. <laughs> I buy them where they're freshest. So generally I like to go to something like locally like to Brothers, um, you know, the, the farmer's market. Generally I like to go to farmer's markets. Um, uh, Harpy's Farm also uh, over here off of Griffin. Uh, it also has uh, wonderful herbs, uh, the farmer's market. Uh, you got to make sure they're, they're fresh. You know, you want them to last. Keep them in water or a little bit of ice. Keep them wrapped in the refrigerator when you're not using it. Okay, but uh, they'll, they'll stay 
they'll make your food stand out. So I, I really encourage you to utilize herbs. Can I, you know, I started using herbs when I was working in Paris. Uh, growing up in New York, I didn't know anything about herbs. Yes, I did, but that was a different type of herb. Uh, and <laughs> going to Paris though, I, there was all these herbs in the marketplace, the farmer's market, the street markets, and so that all these fresh aromatics would really made such a difference in the day-to-day -day cooking, the seasonality of the, the ingredients, the seasonality of the vegetables, the types of herbs really made such a difference and such an impression on me that when I came back to the States and started cooking here in Miami, uh, very much uh, I, I started growing my own herbs outside of Chef Allen's, in my backyard at Chef Allen's actually had, was an herb garden. I was one of the first, uh, never mind farm to table, it was backyard to table at Chef Allen's. And so we've always had herbs growing because if you can pick them when they're fresh and adding all those flavors into it, that's really where it, it makes such a difference uh, for us. So that's kind of what I do with the, the herbs. So buy great fresh herbs. Okay, so here I'm gonna go back to our hummus. Okay, so give that a nice, swizzle on there, be generous with it. Then also I've got our wild mushrooms. And going to put those wild mushrooms right onto that toast. I'll tell you what, this is looking good. And this toast, you know, this toast doesn't have to be for a special occasion. This can be lunch, it could be breakfast, okay? These toasts, Though I call it, you know, toast for the holidays, it really means about using fresh ingredients and cooking well for your, yourself and for your family. Uh, these are not exotic ingredients. These are things that people know, that you know, that are in the neighborhood. Uh, and so that doing the, this toast here, I mean, here, I'll see if I can get that up close, uh, up close and personal with that. Can you see it? Let's see. That, there you go. So you see the wild mushrooms on there. Okay, I've got the thyme that, that's in there. I'm going to actually garnish with a little bit of fresh thyme as well. So just putting a little bit of earthiness from the thyme onto that. Another couple of leaves. Okay, and then again, gonna take that mushroom toast and give that a cut in half. Chef, two questions. Well, how do you feel about hard crusted bread? And the next question is also, why don't you use a microplane to do zest? <laughs> okay, uh, two good questions. Hard crusty bread, awesome, awesome. I love hard crusty bread. There's not, no problem with that. Um, you know, it really breads go as, as towards how you want to utilize them. Um, the, on, on this case, uh, this has a modest crust on it, which is not bad. The hollow is obviously short, uh, soft, but I love a hard crusty bread for sandwiches or for toasting paninis or something. So I'm all for you with the, that. Now the microplane, um, why not? Microplanes are awesome. I probably have a microplane right here. Um, maybe I don't right in my drawer, maybe, nope. Anyway, but the microplane, just to those of you watching, what happens is it sort of just shaves the edge of the zest on this. And so the edge of the zest is what where you have the essential oils on a lemon, on a lime, on an orange. Okay, so the essential oils, where all that flavor is, all of the, the aromas, so that when you're using a microplane, you're sort of shaving just the edge of that. You're not getting any of that pit, okay? When I took this orange and where we started off, as you see, I actually wanted that pit. And I'll reach into my cocktail here. Uh, and I wanted the pit, that bitterness, I was looking for that bitterness to counter sink the bitterness of the cocktail. So, uh, you know, I wanted the, 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 the zest and the, the pit to be in this. Very often, as you know, for finishing, if we do a little microplaning on this, it would be delicious. It would be wonderful. And I very much 
different techniques, different styles of cooking and different finishing methods. So I'm all with you as towards using that. Okay, so we've got a couple of uh, toasts going on. And guess what? I've got another toast for us. Okay, uh, but uh, I'm gonna throw another bread in the, the toaster. The question is asked is where do you like to buy your, your bread? Good question. Uh, you know, th there's a couple of good bakeries that are out there. My favorite is probably uh, Zach the Baker. Uh, beautiful breads. I mean, he's been doing a great job. He's been a friend of mine for a lot of years. He makes some delicious bread, generally hard crusted, generally just delicious uh, in several different styles. I love his Zatar olive bread. Uh, he does a really good job on multi-grain bread. And also I like Sullivan Street. Sullivan Street is a bakery in Miami uh, that's uh, based out of New York. They actually grind their own flour. Uh, so they take the time, they're grinding their own flour. Uh, they're, they're utilizing some old family recipes uh, with yeast starter from uh, up north. And so that, that their sourdough is wonderful. There, there are a couple of different uh, breads and ciabattas uh, that, uh, and, and baguettes that are awesome. Those are my two favorites for breads, okay? And as you know, I think, uh, you know, where you buy your bread makes a big difference. Uh, one of our, one of our uh, participants said, Zach the baker is the best. He, let me see what it says here. He uh, delivers to Hollywood, but you can buy his bread at Whole Foods and they are all kosher. Yes, they are all kosher. And I didn't realize that he delivers to Hollywood. Does he deliver to individual homes? Uh, let's see if that question is out there, whether he delivers to individual Yes, he does. Homes. There's a $40 minimum, but he will deliver to individual homes. Okay. Great. <laughs> a $40 minimum, you, it, you know, it goes it that's goes a fast. lot of bread. Mm, yeah. That's a lot of bread, it. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> that's, you know what, it's worth it. If you've got a, a party uh, for that, I would go with it. Uh, I use, you know, I use uh, Zach the Baker for my breads that I do with uh, the Cafe Books and Books, and we make all of our sandwiches uh, on Zach the Baker breads there. Uh, you know, we get a fresh delivery every day. Uh, so really, really, uh, I'll agree with you on that. It's really a, a wonderful, uh, wonderful choice. Chef, so will, these, will the recipes that you're doing tonight be available to the participants? Um... Uh, Sure, but uh, aren't you writing them down as we're going? I, I know that I am. I don't know whether everybody else <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I don't have them written, uh, you know, as, as recipes, but uh, I'm sure I could share them. Okay, that would be wonderful. Thank so, you. Yeah. Okay, so I smell my bread toasting. So we're going to take a look at that. Um, I didn't know when I could get on or not. Okay, so why toast your bread? You know, why toast it? You know, when you've got a beautiful like challah and kind of toast it. I'll tell you what, it's about texture. It's about bringing out some aromatics in the bread. It finishes the edges. It gives you a crunch to it, a little crust. As well, it gives a touch of bitterness. And it's interesting because most Americans don't like bitter in what they're eating. We are so addicted to sweets and, you know, in all of our foods and all of our flavors that it's a little bit odd to want to toast the bread and get a little bit of char and bitterness to it. But uh, I think when you look at the sensory of having a, a toasted bread compared to a, a simple bread that's not toasted, it adds the, the flavor to it. It adds depth to the, the, the flavors of the, the bread or the toast or the sandwich that you're making. So I, I think it's an important aspect uh, of that. I mean, come on, you all toast your bagels, don't you? So, Absolutely. And talking about bagels, I figure we'd end up the, the, the next one should be that kind of thing. So what I've got is a little bit of goat's cheese and a little bit of smoked salmon here. 
Okay, so we got goat's cheese and smoked salmon for our, our next goat's cheese. I left it out, out to soften, okay, so it's become spreadable. And so that it spreads out nice and, and simple. Okay, so get it spread to, to the edges. Now with the, the salmon, got a couple of nice slices here. So I'm going to take that and kind of cover it edge to edge. Just like that. Again, I'm going to just give it a, a touch of lime essence. Just a little tight, touch of a squeeze for that. So I've got the, the bread, the, the goat's cheese, smoked salmon, and then I'm going to utilize some dill. So with this one, I'm going to take it and cut, cut this actually smaller. So kind of cut this in little triangles. Okay, so that way on each triangle, I'm going to put a little bit of the dill. We'll touch a dill on each of these triangles. And this is kind of, you know, a little bit more fanciful in a, in a cut. You kind of might think it's like a, a little bit of an hors d'oeuvre style like that, so that it picks up nice and simple uh, with that. And here I'm going to place this around. Questions for you. Where do you like to get your bagels and what types of knives do you like to use? <laughs> Inquisitive minds out there. Oh, huh? yes, they are. Okay. So bagels, I do like Brooklyn water bagel for our, our local bagel and support of our, our local uh, folks here. Yes. I think they, they do a, a, a good job. It's not Brooklyn even though they're Brooklyn water bagels, um, but they're, they're, they're good. Um, and, you know, for a, a bagel, uh, you know, they, they again, I, I like to toast a bagel and they got to be fresh. Usually when I go in for bagels, just like when I was a kid in Brooklyn, when you go in to a bagel store, you don't pick out which one you want. You ask the bagel maker, which is the hot ones? What came out of the oven the last? And that's the one you get, okay? You may want, go in thinking you want a sesame or thinking you're gonna go in and get an everything, but the best bagel is really to do that. I remember we'd go in, there's a tradition with my family, uh, Saturday night, late night, we go to the local bake, bakery, uh, bagel store, which is down on Church Avenue, we get bagels, cream cheese, get the freshest bagels, pick up the New York Times. And that's kind of late night, Saturday night, how it started. The New York Times, we pick up the Sunday Times late night when it just came out on the street and the bagels. And we'd have a party at night. So that's kind of fun and delicious kind of thing that I used to do. So with this, I'm going to just go and show a couple of sesame seeds here. And just kind of bringing it back home, as you can see. So we've got, we're ready to enjoy, have cocktails, have friends and family over. We've got lots of toast. So I hope someone in the neighborhood is gonna come over. For ah, if, 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 if you don't hear me anymore, it's because I'm running around the corner. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, a toast to everybody's health good being and hope you're enjoying. I'm here and I'll answer any questions that, that you have. Okay, so thank you. All right, let me ask you the questions. Uh, uh, what type of knives do you like to use? Okay, sharp knives. <laughs> no, you, you know, there, there's a, a number of different types of knives. I, I actually like a Henkel's, you know, a Henkel's knives. And there's French knives and there's uh, flat knives and serrated knives, you know, and each of these knives have a different purpose. You know, for cutting bread, you need a serrated knife. 
Okay, this is an F dick, which is a kind of old fashioned knife, but it's wonderful. The Henkels, uh, I find I could sharpen them very well. I like to hand sharpen them on my own stone, a little bit of oil uh, with a stone and you sharpen them carefully at a specific de angle degree. Take your time and having a sharp knife. There's nothing like working with a sharp knife. So seriously, there are many knives out there on the market. They range from $3 to $300. I'd stay far away from the $3 knife. It's not worth it. You're gonna cut yourself. They'll never stay sharp. You don't need the $300 knife. You probably could do very well with about a 75 to $85 knife. Maybe it's $95 knife, but a, a good one. And one that you feel comfortable with, okay? French knives, which is the shape of a knife come in eight inch, nine inch, 12 inches. Uh, just being a chef and being what, what, how I was trained and how I've become comfortable with it. I, I work generally with a 12 inch French knife. Okay, a hand Um But, uh, you know, most people kind of like a shorter knife that, you know, it gets to be a, a little bit long so that a knife that's more like uh, seven, eight inches might be more comfortable for your hand. Okay, uh, I was just at, I was just told that the Brooklyn Bagel has, has been questioned by the, the health department. So check that out before you go over to Brooklyn Bagel. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Chef Allen, uh, this hour is flying by. And in terms of uh, what we want to know is next time at our, our next meeting, which will be on Tuesday evening, January 12th, you're going to be speaking about the spices of the Caribbean. Uh, can you give us a little bit more about what you're going to be covering on that evening? Sure. So spices of the Caribbean, is like one of my favorite topics. Spices kind of make the dish. Spices are the aromatics. We've been cooking with spices since biblical days. And the spices of the Caribbean really incorporate so many different flavors and so many different cultures in the Caribbean. And therefore in the Caribbean that comes around of South Florida cuisines because so much of it filters back and forth. So we're going to look into several of the spicing combinations, the origins of some of the spices, how they, they've grown and kind of how to cook with them uh, with a couple simple dishes. So I'll do a couple simple dishes and also do a spice mixing class, okay, or uh, a little workshop on spices as to it's how to mix spices properly because sometimes people don't get how to balance the flavor uh, with that. You know, we're, we're not brought up using spices. Most of us are brought up actually not liking spicy food or spices and spices are really aromatic. There is heat that is added to it, but more spices are aromatic and warm and kind of good for your body, good for your digestion and awesome for flavor. And that's kind of what we're gonna be discussing next time uh, in 2021 in January. Oh, wonderful. Uh, looking up. In preparation for that, uh, is there some place that you or places you recommend that we can buy uh, some of the spices before the next lecture? Sure. Actually, what I'll do, I'll send out a list of spices that we're going to do for our spice mixing class. That's okay? wonderful. Okay. And you know, you can buy them locally. Uh, you know, I'll talk about that. Uh, but you can also buy them. There's a couple of good spice vendors online. Uh, again. Freshness counts. You know, my mom used to have spices up on her cabinet for a long time. I think 15, 20 years. Uh, not a good idea. So if you've got <laughs> spices that are that old, toss them before the end of the year and we'll Wonderful. buy some new spices together. Wonderful. Uh, you have been wonderful. One last question. People want to know about your cutting boards. Uh, where do you, what kind of cutting board do you like? Okay, the cutting boards, I, I love a good, healthy cutting board, a nice thick cutting board. And these are called booth, booze. Uh, you can't quite see it, but there's the, the title of it, booze. Booze Block. This is the company that makes butcher blocks, like full table butcher blocks at Chef Allen's. I had a butcher block that was probably 18 inches thick. 
and that's where I did all my butchering. Uh, these are butcher block tops, uh, and a good hearty butcher block gets cleaned down and works really well. So I, I would encourage you to do that. Uh, another thing that I do want to talk about before we sign off. You beat me to it. My Go new ahead. cookbook, okay? My new cookbook, which is Green Fig and Lionfish, and we'll go into that a little bit into next seminar, next uh, thing, and we'll talk about some of the spice and flavors in that. But I'll tell you what, good Konica present, good Christmas present, good to share, okay? This is all about sustainable seafood, locally caught sustainable seafood, sustainable uh, local farm produce, lots of great recipes, great pictures that go on in here. I can kind of take a, take a glance at some of the, the pictures, uh, the flavors, the recipes are easy and delicious. I'll tell you what, if you order it, you can order it at Green Fig and Lionfish, which is my website, which has that. I can personally autograph it for you and send it out. And actually right now, I'm donating $5 for every book that I sell to No Kid Hungry. So $5 from every book that I sell this season of going in the holidays goes to No Kid Hungry to feed hungry kids. So oh, that is so, purchase there. That's so wonderful. Uh, Chef, please make sure that we have that website and your website to share with everyone. And just so everyone knows uh, at our last session, uh, Chef Allen donated a, sign a signature uh, a book to the to the library and we will be auctioning that off uh, after his series so we thank you for that and we thank you for your commitment to the library your commitment to great food and uh, we're honored to have you here tonight uh, I want to thank everyone for attending we've had wonderful questions wonderful participation my mouth is watering over just looking at, at what what you have prepared my name is Fern Cantor I'm on the board of the wonderful Sterling Road Friends of the Library uh, chef thank you for being part of us and uh, happy holidays to everybody and uh, I think that's going to be a wrap for tonight thank you all for being here and again Alan Chef Allen, thank you for being a real friend to the library. Good night. My pleasure. Everybody. Thank you. Happy, healthy new year. Thank you all. Thank you so much.